Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Dan Novak. This program is aimed at English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Coming up on today's program, I have a story on a Ukrainian rapper who writes songs about the war. Anna Mateo has this week's words and their stories about ocean expressions. Faith Perlow and Jonathan Evans talk about why spelling in English can be so hard. Dan Friedel has a story on how food containers are getting smaller but their prices are rising. And Ashley Thompson reports on carbon emissions from farm animals in New Zealand. But first, a young generation pressed by war in Ukraine has turned its anger into rap music. Ukrainian volunteer soldier Otoy is putting the war into the words and loud beats of rap. He has written lyrics during Russian attacks. He said it helps relieve the tension of fighting. Russian soldiers drink vodka. We are making music, said the rapper, whose real name is Vyacheslav Drofa. The 23-year-old did not think he could kill anyone until he shot a Russian soldier in the war's opening weeks. The Russian invasion, which began on February 24th, has helped build Ukrainian nationalism. That is something Russian President Vladimir Putin did not want. Now that millions have lost loved ones and homes, anger at Russia is fierce. In Ukraine, the young generation was born after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. Many young people say they cannot imagine feeling anything but hatred for Russia. Otoy's lyrics, with expletives directed at Russia and details of Russian war dead, speak from the heart. He lost his older brother, a soldier, in the battle over the Azovstal steel factory in the port city of Mariupol. The lyrics give voice to the anger and hatred shared by many Ukrainians towards Russia. Enemy is one of four new songs that Otoy wrote while driving ammunition and weapons to troops on the front lines. He said of Russian soldiers, We are not scared, but we are nauseous, because you smell stale even when your heart still beats. Other Ukrainians are putting their anger into music as well. One song by the band Surface Tension is called We Will Kill You All. In it, the singer screams, We will dance on your bones. Your mom won't come for you. The song, full of expletives, has more than 59,000 views since its April 5th release on YouTube. 25-year-old Irina Osipenko was among those at a music event in Kyiv meant to raise money. She was there to watch Otoy. She said she has only hatred for the Russians. I hate them, and I'm sorry it will never change, she said. I will explain it to my children, and I hope that my children will explain to their children. Otoy's older brother, Dmitry Lysen, is missing and believed dead. He was a fighter with the Azov Regiment, among the groups that defended the Azov steel plant for nearly three months. The defense of the plant came to represent Ukrainian resistance. Otoy dedicated his song, Find My Country, to Azovstal's defenders. He rapped in English with the aim, he said, of reaching people all over the world. Otoy is also working on a collection of songs, mainly written while supplying ammunition to troops in the East, 
fighting has worsened there since Russian forces were pushed back from their early offensive on Kiev. Subjects of the songs include life at war and friendship among soldiers. Other songs are about wartime life for civilians and fighting for Ukrainian freedom. He said the songs have the smell of war dust. I was actually lying on the ground under the airstrikes and bomb shelling, Otoy said. He added that he could feel the smell of, you know, like bombs, dead bodies, and dust, blood, and other stuff. This is the best way to show your hate, I think, said Otoy. On this program, we explore words and expressions in the English language. Today, we talk about the ocean. Oceans are amazingly large, deep bodies of water. When talking about some of the deepest parts of the world's oceans, much is still not known. With something so big and full of wonder, it is not surprising that English has several expressions that use the word ocean. For starters, we can simply say oceans of something to mean a lot of something. For example, Timothy will have oceans of problems if he does not find a job soon. He is racking up oceans of debt. Naturally, it is very common to use the word ocean in expressions that describe very large, seemingly limitless things. For example, my love of reading is as big as the ocean. I really love to read. You can also say as deep as the ocean, to describe something very vast and intense. For example, if you love someone deeply, you can say your love for them is as deep as the ocean. It seems as if it has no end. Saying that something is as deep, big, or wide as the ocean is a simile. A simile compares things using like or as. An ocean can also help describe something that is very far away from something else. The expression to be oceans apart can be used for more than just physical distance. If you are oceans apart from something, you are far from reaching a point of agreement or having common ground. Consider these examples. During an important business deal, the two parties found that they were oceans apart. It was impossible to make a deal that was good for both sides. Even though their political and religious views were oceans apart, the two people shared a love of music and became close friends. Finally, the ocean is so big that it would not make a difference if you added a drop of water to it. So if I say something is just a drop in the ocean, it is a small amount compared to the amount that is needed. For example, some might say investing $1 million in a country's educational system is just a drop in the ocean. Millions more dollars will be needed to make real change. And that's all the time we have for this Words and Their Stories. Until next time, I'm Ana Mateo. Recently, 14-year-old Harini Logan won the Scripps National Spelling Bee in the United States.
She correctly spelled twenty-two words during a ninety-second spell off. The words included reatophyte, eczema, saccharose, and finally the winning word moorhen, which means a female red grouse bird. Most Americans, however, would find it difficult to spell any of these words. From an early age, native English speakers know there are clear differences between how words are pronounced and how they are spelled, but they do not know that the difference is unique to English. Among major languages, languages like Italian or Finnish can be spelled more easily because each letter of the alphabet matches to one sound. Students studying these languages can have ninety percent reading accuracy after the first year. That information comes from Philip Seymour in the British Journal of Psychology. In English, many letters of the alphabet have two or more sounds. This is why, even after years of learning, students of English are still far below Italian or Finnish students in reading accuracy. English started as a Germanic language. It is most closely connected to German and Dutch, especially in grammar and basic vocabulary. During the Norman invasion in the twelfth century, Old English was spoken, but French was used in government and legal documents. And Latin was used in religious and educational activities. As a result, more French and Latin words entered the English language. The printing press was invented in the late fourteen hundreds. This helped to establish English spelling, and strengthen the connection between how English is spoken. And how it is written. The English of today is how the language was written at the time. However, the spoken language started to change in the fifteen hundreds with the pronunciation of all long vowels, especially in southern England. For example, the word "bite" was pronounced closer to "beat." In fourteen hundred, before changing through the years to its current sound, the effect was that the English language had old spellings, but new sounds. English has twenty-six letters in the alphabet, but over forty-four individual sounds, depending on the variation of spoken English. There are several sounds represented by only one letter. For example, the letter C can sound like an S, as in city, and it also sounds like a K, as in cat. If that is not hard enough, let's try to pronounce the letter X, as X, in. Box, as gz in exam, and just z in xylophone. There are only five or six vowel letters in the English alphabet. They include a, e, i, o, u, and sometimes y. But there are twenty different ways to sound them. For example, 
A double O sound in English can be pronounced as oo, as in the word boot, or a, uh, as in the word book. These sounds are formed by air moving through the mouth and throat freely. In the study of language, called linguistics, teachers use a drawing to represent the mouth and show where vowels are formed. At the center is the most common vowel sound of a. Uh. It is the most relaxed and natural vowel. It takes almost no effort of the tongue or the throat to create the sound. Brian M. Seitzema is an associate pronouncer for the script's National Spelling Bee. He observes that since it takes little effort, the sound a uh often makes its way into pronunciations. For example, the word please often turns into police when someone is trying to call attention. This is another reason why spelling in English is so difficult. In the United States, India, Britain, and Japan, people are starting to see smaller containers and higher prices for food. The cost increases are affecting snack food, cheese, drinks, soaps, and more. Economic experts say the changes in package sizes are a result of inflation. They call it shrinkflation. In the U.S., a popular kind of facial paper once had 65 sheets in each box. Now it has 60. A container of yogurt that once had 150 grams now has about 125 grams. In Britain, a kind of coffee once had 100 grams in each package. It now has 90 grams. In India, a kind of soap is smaller by 20 grams. In some cases, people who buy these products are getting less for the same price. Some are seeing higher prices for smaller packages. Experts say the move by food companies is not new, but it is common in times of inflation. Around the world, people paid on average 7% more for goods in May than they did the year before. A company that researches prices, S&P Global, said people should expect the inflation rate to stay the same at least until September. Edgar Dworsky is a former lawyer for the American state of Massachusetts. He runs a website called Consumer World. He noted that price increases and smaller packaging comes in waves. He added... We happen to be in a tidal wave at the moment. Dworsky said he started seeing smaller food containers last autumn. He notes coffee containers have less coffee and bathroom paper has fewer sheets. Many companies that make these goods create smaller packages, but also change the words on them to make them seem new or better, Dworsky said. One kind of corn snack made by PepsiCo is called Fritos. They recently had a party-sized bag that contained about 510 grams. New packages are still called party size, but now they only have 439 grams. PepsiCo did not answer questions about the new size when asked by the Associated Press. But the company did say the bottles for a drink called Gatorade were made smaller so people could hold them more easily, not because of inflation. 
large consumer goods companies, Kimberly Clark and Procter & Gamble, also did not answer questions. But in Japan, the company that makes snacks called Kalbi said the cost of materials was responsible for a price increase of 10% and a size decrease of 10%. Kalbi makes soy and vegetable snacks. In India, Dabur India has been open about its changes. Bias Anand is head of communications for the company. He called the price increases and size decreases down-switching. People around the world have been noticing shrinkflation. They have taken photos and shown examples of it on social media. Many people say they are changing the way they buy food. Alex Aspaker in the American state of Ohio is saving money by buying larger amounts of cheese and cutting it himself instead of buying cut cheese. He said he has been surprised by how quickly the changes have happened. I was prepared for it to a degree, he said, but there hasn't been a limit to it so far. Experts say prices may go down, but it is not likely packages will get larger. Upsizing is kind of rare, Dworsky said. In some cases, experts say, costs for food manufacturers are going up, and they need to pass that on to buyers. But some companies might just be seeking higher profits. Hitendra Chaturvedi is a business professor at Arizona State University. He said he knows some companies are having trouble finding workers and paying higher costs. But he noted that PepsiCo's profits rose 128% in the first three months of 2022. I'm not saying they're profiteering, but it smells like it, he said. Profiteering means selling things at very high prices at a time when they are hard to find. Chaturvedi questioned, Are we using supply constraints as a weapon to make more money? New Zealand recently released a proposal to put a price on gases released from agricultural activity. The move is part of an effort to deal with the country's biggest sources of greenhouse gases, sheep and cattle. Greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide and methane, are believed to cause warming temperatures in the Earth's atmosphere. The measure would make New Zealand the first country to have farmers pay for emissions from farm animals, the Ministry for Environment said. New Zealand, home to 5 million people, has about 10 million cattle and 26 million sheep. These animals release gases such as methane. Nearly half of New Zealand's total greenhouse gas emissions come from agriculture. But agricultural emissions have previously not been part of the country's emissions trading plan. This has led some to criticize the government's willingness to stop the greenhouse effect, known as global warming. Under an early version of the plan, which was put together by government and farm community representatives, farmers will have to pay for their gas emissions starting in 2025. Short and long-lived farm gas will be priced separately, although a single measure to calculate their volume will be used. James Shaw is New Zealand's climate change minister. He said, There is no question that we need to cut the amount of methane we are putting into the atmosphere, and an effective emissions pricing system for agriculture will play a key part in how we achieve that. The proposal includes incentives 
for farmers who reduce emissions through feed additives, while on-farm forestry can be used to make up for emissions. Money from the plan will be invested in research, development, and information services for farmers. Michael Ahi is chair of the Climate Action Group, Hewaka Ikenoa. Ahi used the term sustainable, meaning involving methods that do not completely use up or destroy natural resources, to describe the plan. Our recommendations enable sustainable food and fiber production for future generations, while playing a fair part in meeting our country's climate commitments, Ahi said. The proposal would possibly be the biggest change to farming since the removal of agricultural subsidies in the 1980s, said Susan Kilsby an agricultural economist at ANZ Bank. A final decision on the plan is expected in December. I'm Ashley Thompson. And that's our program for today. Listen again tomorrow to learn English through stories from around the world. I'm Dan Novak.